What you see is what you get. W F N D. Fly nerds. You see it the same. Yeah. You see black excellence and intelligence. We now combine. Fly nerds on the verge of connecting the minds. North, south, east, west over digital lines. Catalogs of the culture inside. Seen it with our own eyes. We done been through the trends and phases. The names and the legacy, the changing faces. We can't talk shop, only dealing the truth. You tuning in to the fly nerd. W F N G F N G Fly Nerd Radio W F N G Fly Nerd Radio Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, you are now in tune to F to the N to the G The Flyers Podcast in the Universe. Oh my goodness, yes. Fly Nerd Group Podcast, we are here. It's the YouTube show edition. Yeah, it's like the two-star <laughs> championship edition Street Fighter 2 thing. <laughs> What's good, guys? How y'all doing? What's good, uh, brother? I'm cracking. Uh, yeah. I'm good. Uh, you know, it's it's the weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the end of, I, guess it, I guess it'll be the, the beginning of the week when people hear this, but you know. Yeah, right. when people hear this, the weekend will be over. So technically, this has been a very it, eventful weekend. It has yeah, been. For real. Yeah, yeah. Very eventful to say that from every yeah. angle, man. man yeah, so. every, every angle is covered. Every, <laughs> no stone unturned. Right. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> like, yo, we got new music to to trailers to fucking people getting popped. <laughs> yo, what the hell? What the fuck? Yeah, going yeah. On? someone someone tried Live to put TV. some red on that. Someone tried to put some red on that orange. Yeah, they yeah. tried. <laughs> some more red in that hat. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that was interesting. Uh I don't know stage play or is it? Really... I don't know. I mean, because there were there is two two people got you know legit lost their lives there and and they did True. kill the gunman. So True. I don't you know it's it's one of those things. If if it was a um if it was a, a, a stage uh, hell of a play because uh, people people actually people actually lost their lives. So like if it. Yeah, so no, you're right. If, if yeah, there people, was people lost stage, their lives. There was lives that that was at that, that was at hand, man. There's blood on the hand, so you know, right. all around, you know. So, um, hey, it, yeah. it's just an interesting time. I don't know it, what this is going to propel and move going forward, but yeah, it's um, I, I just say just keep your eye on the situation. That's yeah, all. That's I, what, right. Please all you can do is keep well, keep well, eye well. keep your eye on the situation and uh you know that's all you, that's all you, that's all we can really do because it's uh right. it's definitely a galvanizing thing you yeah. know it, it's it's no matter how you no matter how you slice it someone actually took a shot at him right like it happened yeah. right like it, right. it's and it's one of those things where it it's it's either going to embolden or the base will be the base and that'll be it. So all we all you can see, all we can do is wait it out. You know, is it? Out, right? Yep, it's all we can do. It's 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 a fl- right now everyone's in the moment. Yeah, cuz like right, you know, really, cuz the craziest thing is this is like one of the wildest things since when somebody tried to pop rank way back. Right. Then. Yeah, right. exactly. Mm-hmm. It is it is very reminiscent of someone trying to hit Ronnie. So you know, hey, God forbid, but right. you know, <laughs> yeah, but God forbid, I'm, 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 I'm gonna call it like I see it. That was Ronnie. <laughs> that was that was Ronnie. We had Smooth Bill. Uh, we, we had Smooth Bill. Foxy Bill. Yeah, we had we had we had uh, yeah, Foxy Bill. We had uh, we had Boring George. We had Dumb George. So yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, yeah, all right, all right, all right. I'm just okay. calling them like a Zim. Yeah, that's leveled off. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then we and then Obama was just kind of cool. It was like, all right, he's all right up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all all I can do is sh- all you can do is shrug your shoulders and, and hope it all shakes out. Um, yeah. Uh. Anyway, I always tell people though, just pay attention to your local elections first because right. that's yeah. the things that that's affect really you right, right away. 
Right. Your local election. So pay attention to what your local government is doing because they will enforce the laws right away. Right. It's like federal stuff always takes time, even if it's a law that we that that we know is going to F us in the A in the long term. It's like, oh, man, I'll be like 55 when that hits me. But it, <laughs> but with right. the local and state stuff, they could do that. It'd be like tomorrow, like Illinois, just bam. All right. Tomorrow your tax is up. Like, damn, how we missed that. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So yeah, pay- always pay attention to the locals and always pay attention to that first because that affects you immediately. You know what I mean? All this other horseplay wrestling shit. We'll get to the top of the turnbuckle later. <laughs> right. You know Exa- I mean? Exactly. It's not that it's not important. I'm not saying that at all, but it nah. it, it it definitely Well, the DNC is gonna be in Chicago next year. Yeah. So yeah. um I will try to be attendance into that. I will be uh, you know, follow journalism, mm-hmm. journalism, excuse me. Um, right. and um see what happens, you know what I mean? But uh right. just be careful because when I went out there, I remember when Trump came to Chicago, we was we wasn't having that shit. Dude didn't come out. Dude didn't he, come he, out. Yeah, at he all. did, it was he, at the he did not come outside. Yeah, he did yeah, not he come didn't outside. Come out. He didn't come out on podium, he didn't say nothing, he left. Like he, yeah, <laughs> he packed up yeah, yeah. Left. We ran him out of town. That's right. When yeah, she tried yeah. to have that rally here, and it, it was like yeah, it yeah. was just too yeah. much. <laughs> it was just too not much. Not today, sir. Not, not today. Not today. Not today. No, no. Watch, man. We stood on business, and mm-hmm. he didn't come out. So yeah, but I seen a lot of wild chaos out in the streets, though, from police yeah. brutality. Man, some wild shit. You know what I mean? Bloody shit. So you know, be careful out there. Absolutely. Politics can get chaotic. Yeah, in, and in I mean the, the and yeah, the unfortunate part is like this is the 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 super alt right has been waiting for this to use as an excuse. Like like right. not not the politician, not the political guys, the crazy ones who believe all the propaganda. Right. Yeah. Like, like, They've yeah. been waiting for something like this to give them the excuse to react. It's like the crazy example, fan demand in real right, life. Right, the, right. These are going to be the crazy fan demands in real life. I'm not talking like, like to be honest, uh, the the ones in Congress and the one like the the crazy uh, ones in Congress stuff. They don't want stuff like this to happen because they don't know how to control it. It's bad. Yeah. It's overall is bad for the brand. But right. the lower, the lower section, the like the yeah. the one. The 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 the, uh, the gun owners that feel like I should be able to walk in the mall with my forty five out, yeah, you know those are you know, the mouth breathers. Oh, they ready? Yeah, they they they, 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 they they've be been waiting for, for an event like this. They want to blame. They just want to. They, they they just gonna blame people for this shot who didn't have nothing to do with it. Right. Cool. Mm-hmm. Just to exactly. just to say it, they gonna say, oh, it, it was a BLM. I see this guy in the Black Lives Matter shirt. Blam blam. Cause he, right. he, it was they. They shot at Trump. Then they gonna say, "Oh, look, it's a, it's some some queer people over there." Blam, blam. They shot at Trump. Like, oh, oh no, those guys, they gonna they gonna use it every group that that they got something against. They gonna use this as justification for their own violence, and that's where it's dangerous. Right. Cause prime example, you had a Patriot yeah. Front over there in uh, Tennessee a few days before this happened. They up here pulling on full fledged marches during like one of the. I guess they had like a parade or something like that in Tennessee, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they had like full like dudes, you know, in the Patriot Front uniform. They got American flag. They got the "Don't Tread on Me" flag. They got. They even had the daggone Confederate flag, just marching hard, like fifty strong. And I'm like, wow, they 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 really want to be ready for this. So yeah, I just watch watch the watch the streets. Still, you still yeah. got to watch the streets. Absolutely, Keep no matter. Gotta watch the streets, man. Gotta watch the streets. Watch the streets, man. So let's lay off the politics for a second. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get into the good it. things let's of the city. Ship years, ship yeah, years, let's get ship to the years. The fun part of the city. <laughs> so yeah, years. man. Um, <clears throat> a lot of other things that was happening that was fun, that was yes. cool. You know what I mean? Uh, you know. We had mentioned before that a lot of um, other festivals had uh, dropped out this year, but there's always one that always remaining. And I guess the title is appropriate when they say the chosen few. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> chosen, <laughs> the chosen few picnic was uh, over the weekend. And um, hey, man, it, it was it looked like it was popping. I didn't have a chance to attend, but um, I do have friends and comrades that was out there. And, um, looked like they enjoyed themselves, you know, fellow uh, fly nerd group, Dwayne Powell, 
He's a DJ. He was spinning. Yeah, up he was out there. Uh, I saw that picture with him and uh, Leon Leon Rogers. Is that am I saying his name right? Uh, not yeah, Leon he's spinning right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Leon Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon Rogers. Um, yeah. Of course, this is the part where everybody come out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. This is kind of like the kick it spot. You know, you come out, the ladies is out, the music is popping, you know, you get your spot, you get your tent, you know, people barbecuing, drinks, smoky smokes, you know, it's all fun. You know what I mean? It's all, this is the ultimate, like, this summertime in the shot epitome when it comes to, like, kicking it out and doing summer activities. You know what I mean? So, uh, a lot of DJs, back to back, you know, um, and yeah, just festivities, man, getting festive. <laughs> yes, sir, I should be right. It, so it looked um, like a good time. I saw I saw some uh, IG stuff from it. I saw some I saw some uh, some lives from it. It looked like it was a great uh, like a good time. Was I saw the pics that uh, Dwayne Powell posted. Yeah, yeah, I saw the same. So you know, some people was complaining about the pricing and stuff like that. And um, you know, things change. You know, running a festival yeah. it takes a lot of money to you, you, run. You can't still strikes, folks. You can't uh you can't expect uh twenty sixteen prices in twenty twenty five. This is not <laughs> like like you just can't like yeah. like you can't like it, it, yeah. this is part of this is just part of life. Things change and right. it, it's it's the people who who can't adjust to those changes are though those are the ones who always say get old fast. Ah yeah, you know, because you can't adapt like like once you stop being able to adapt to change, that's when you start to get old. Yeah. Well, on the versus side, you see people uh, who paid it and say this is the best hundred dollars. Right. Exactly. You know exactly. I mean? so, you know, <laughs> exactly. You get to pay. You feel safe. You you hearing good music, good people, good vibes. Exactly. Hey, fuck it. Why not? If you go you going to spend the chop, spend the chop. You spend know? it right. You gonna um, spend it anyway. Like you said, twenty sixteen. You know, you just go out the house, pay a little fifteen to twenty bucks, and walk up in there. You'd be good. But you have to pay for the spot. You have to pay for security. You gotta pay for yeah. maintenance. You gotta pay for a whole bunch of stuff. You gotta just pay the These things, the cost. These things These cost. cost. That's These why things the cost. other festivals fell off because locally they couldn't put up the money to uh, support it anymore. You know, so um, things move around, but this one still stands and it was a success. There also was another festival in Hyde Park called the Passport Vibes. I didn't know about this. Shout out to Maxi, he was out there. And um, yeah, I, it was popping I, I too. Was. So, yeah, it was popping too. So, you know, to see two festivals going on in the mm -hmm. city and everyone out just kicking it, man, it, it's the vibe, man. It's summertime in the shy. That's what summertime in the shy is all about, man. You know, Absolutely, so y'all be safe out there kicking it and, um, you know, have a good time. That's the fly nerd That's way. <laughs> so, there's Can't also what else was cracking out there, Chauncey? Man, we're on streets. They had a nice little blur confest happening this weekend. I want to say it was in DC this year. Okay. So this is about I want. Oh yeah, that's the one that moves around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like it's oh, been it at a, been, it's been at like a different spot like at least every other year or it seems mm -hmm. like uh, maybe every year. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of been kind in of NYC. Uh, it's been in DC this year. It's been in NYC. Mm -hmm. I want to say it's been in Philly also. So like Sean said, it moves around every other year. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, a few familiar faces that I know that was up there. Uh, shout out to Blur.Radio. Uh, homie Mike was up there. And a couple mm -hmm. others was out there. I saw some cosplayers out there as well in DC kicking it and shit. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they had any panels or any announcements or things of that nature, but uh, speaking of that, the SDCC is coming up. Marvel will be at Hall H. Um, Jada Toys will have announced pre-orders for a Chun-Li and yeah, Angie yeah, Ken, yeah, Violent yeah, Ken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Violent Ken. So those going up are pre-orders at the end of July, so if you went to that, or any other the Which, SDCC uh... pre-orders. Which Street Fighter did Violent Ken show up in? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. I, I don't like. I'm like. I'm. I'm trying. Like, I'm trying to like pack, picture it in my in my head. Or is it the one from the anime when he got influenced by uh by Akuma? No, yeah, I want to say it's out for three or four. 
Oh, oh it's one of the, it's one of the alphas. Okay, I didn't yeah. I didn't really I didn't really get into like the story of the alphas. So I mm. I just kind of oh, played. Oh, so it. that was alpha. Yeah. Because oh, I know. Does, that, does it I know does, in regards to the anime side? Um, the Street Fighter Two anime movie from back in the day, Bison, you know, made him violent. Yeah, yeah, B- Bison. You're right, not Akuma. But, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, like Bison. Power. Yeah, you're right. Man, that was a wow, good. That was boy, a good one. Man. Yeah, that was damn. That good. was good. I remember that. That Chun Li Vega fight will always be historic to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah that... yeah. that was dope. Yes, sir. Wait, hold up. Let me pull this up real quick, guys. So yeah, this is Violent Ken right okay, here. Ultra Street Fighter Two. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, his his eyebrow is evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <good. laughs> But he's supposed to have a like a purple haze. You see that? Like yeah, I see. I see the purple haze. haze. His hair. His so yeah. His the, mullet so is fi- his mullet is different. <laughs> yeah. So the figure is going to um have those features on it, and um yeah, Violent Ken, that's going to be. They better give him the, the difference. Evil... I ain't never seen this. I never they better seen give him before. the evil eyebrow. If without yeah, the evil eyebrow, it. it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> I need the evil, evil eyebrow. eyebrow. I'm changing the name. Wait, he had he had shadow. Eyebrow. He had shadow. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, now it's coming back to me, but yeah, I didn't. This is one of those that I was kind of like, eh, I didn't follow the story of the game too much. I was just punching and kicking. <laughs> yeah, it, was he a special unlockable like Akuma or something? Yeah, do something yeah. Special? he was doing the special okay. unlockable. Yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, those are conventions and stuff that's popping. Um, check sure. out your local scheduling to see what's popping in your area. You know what I mean? And let us know what's going on if you in the other neck of the woods. Let the fly nerd group let us know what's going on. Maybe we could uh check it out, pay a visit with in the us, future. Man. Yeah. Kick it with us. <laughs> Kick it Kick. with us, man. Kick it over here. Kick right. it over here. So all right. Before let's get into some trailer talk. Let's get into some trailers, nah. man. So we, it is, that was a lot of stuff. Trailer to talk, though. Yeah. Before we get some trailer talk though. Gotta make a little bit of a rewind. Cause last show. I know we talked about some trailers. We talked about the Penguin show for Max. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I made a little bit of a, a typo there saying that it was before the events of the Batman. It's actually after the events of the Batman. Because looking at back at the trailer, you do see the flooding. And they do mm-hmm. match about Coney dying. So that was my mm-hmm. bad for me. I'm going to be like Jamie Foxx and blame it on the alcohol. Retraction. <laughs> retraction. 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 You've been... Retraction. No, nah, it's you know, it's, it's dope when you fact check yourself because right. that, that means no yeah. one else has to do it. Yeah, you fact you like like you brought it, that's integrity right there. Good journalism. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so good journalism it, and and that's the flying their way, man. You know what I mean? Yes, Cause sir, you yes, know, sir. sometimes we say stuff and we be just all into the energy and stuff. I said something wrong on um I just released uh am bison uh package toy opening and stuff and I had messed up on the name because I forgot okay. that Vega was switched into Balrog too. Like all the name switching, I thought it was just in Bison and Balrog, but Vega was included in that. So yeah. someone corrected me and yeah, all right, correct. It's cool. It's cool. It's all, <laughs> all great, baby. That's why it's the fly nerd group because that's why we here. It's all a community. So if if we slipping up, there's always someone to come up to pick up the slack. And I love that. Even if we have to do it to ourselves, it's all good. So it's all good. So let's move on to this trailer. Hopefully we get all the information right. (laughs) Uh, You know, purpose gonna get it wrong now. All right, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> so um one of my favorite series uh when Marvel dropped um the, you know the series on Disney Plus and stuff. Yeah. Um there was actually two what we're going to talk about but my first one was WandaVision. You know what yes. I mean? That was that was one of that my was, favorites. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was really good. So they're going to do a follow-up continuation of WandaVision. So to speak, this is uh one of the characters from WandaVision is Agatha Agatha all along. So let me pull that up real quick. Agatha, Agatha Harkness, the uh, signature Marvel witch. Um, 
kind of like more uh the character in the books was you know more built in a traditional witch uh type sense this is, and this seems to be leaning into that so and but, right that's what i was going to say this yeah this seems like to be really leaning bit, into it a little bit witchy <laughs> Shout out a little to bit uh, witchy. Chicago lands on uh Catherine Hahn, star of the show. You know, you know she's what? From every Chicago? yeah, she she's she, from she, uh, West Suburbs. Yeah, yeah, she from she's from Illinois. Well, um, of course, trauma. But uh, I, I love every time she shows up in something. It's always quality. Exactly. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Step and her performance in WandaVision was very compelling and very dope. You know what I mean? She broke the fourth wall. She was doing a lot of stuff in there and she she played the character well. So this looked really good. I want, I want to know what's all of this about. She's looked like she a detective or doing some shit. So um, this is dope, man. Um, can't wait to see this. First, I was kind of skeppy, but um, after seeing the trailer and stuff and seeing how spooky, excuse me, seeing how spooky and shit it is, it's yeah. pretty dope, man. Also, shout doing? out to uh, Aubrey Plaza because anytime you see her, you know you're in for a ride. Yeah, and you know they yeah. they worked together on Parks and Rec. She was uh she, she was uh from the rival town in Parks and Rec. Uh, so she was right. like she was a recurring character. And she was like a thorn, uh, in uh, what's her name side. And it was it, so it was always funny every time she showed up. It was always hilarious. So yeah, exactly. That's dope. Yeah, this is this. So, is, yeah. I mean, for Halloween, for the Halloween season, they I think they're timing it right. And if you actually go back and look when it was supposed to be released, when it was at, when Bob Chappick was was making the schedule, you'll see that it was coming out in a, at a, like a, like a summer or a spring slot. So okay. why like so now now they've course corrected less shows, more 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 uh, directive nature. Mm-hmm. So we see now this is coming in Halloween. So they they they're playing up the Halloween card like they did with Werewolf by Night. So that's dope. Yeah. And, and I, I think that the trailer just feels different than the trailers for some of the other shows have been, um, you know. So and, and I I like it. It's like they're going, they're building off that WandaVision momentum, which still exists because people still want to know. I just love the fact that it's building off uh, some horror energy because Marvel oh, yeah. does horror energy, and you know, outside of you know what we've seen and read in the books. You know, stuff like Werewolf by Night, um, even though Doctor Strange's multiverse, multiverse of man is tried, um, you know, the little bit of we got in WandaVision and other little stuff like uh, Marvel What If with the Marvel Zombies episode. I love that Marvel can tap into the various genres that they have in their own universe. And this is kind of like right. a true combination of it and of what we can get. I agree. Feet. I agree. And, you know, with titles like Blade, uh, yes. you know, Midnight Suns is in the talk, you know, mm. is, uh, you know, Moon Knight, they got to continue with him. You know, yeah. these are their dark characters that deal with the dark forces and things of that nature, along with Doctor Strange and stuff like that. So this universe yeah. has to be established. And um, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. And like Sean said, they course corrected everything, put it out on Halloween, so it'll be right around, you know, right around oh, spooky yeah. season. Yeah, it's the it's the mood. It's it'll it captures the mood, and it's and it's that weird mix of legit creepy and right. a little and a little whimsy because that because you have to kind of you know you have to kind of like buy into some, you know it's kind of witchy, you yeah. know, right? And so so there, yeah, it's a little witchy. So you know it can be a little it it, it can it a little whimsy in there um, because it, you know Agatha is kind of a you know she's a character, right? You know, right, um, right, and right. and. And Catherine Hahn is at her best when she's allowed to like flex the character, like like she immerses herself in these characters. She's a she's a good character actor, right? Um, yeah. So, so I'm I'm looking, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I want them to establish more of the of the magic world of Marvel, both the big magic and the small, like both the both the, like the 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 Wanda the, the Doctor Wanda and Doctor Strange stuff, and the Blade Midnight Suns Ghost Rider mm-hmm. stuff, and a, you know, and a little further down if they if they so choose to get there. I mean, they they have they have an endless amount of magic and horror characters that they can that they can use. Tap into it because we want to see it, man. And um, ain't nothing wrong getting a little spooky out here. I'll so, just be uh, happy yeah. when uh, Mephisto finally debuts because everybody and their mom have been clamoring for Mephisto. I, I, I have been one of them voices. I want Mephisto. 
I, you I, do? I mean, What's the big like, rush? Everybody, no, I want everybody Mephisto. Everybody be like, oh, Mephisto finna pop up here. Or I want Mephisto. Mephisto. Pop up there. I'm like, it, this is this is my this is my somewhat crazy fandom, man. I just I just ready for see the character on screen. <laughs> I just want them to hurry up and get to that. Um, you know, and that that just brought you know uh, that can just transition us right there into Cap. In America, uh, New World, because the actor mm. that I wanted to play Mephisto is obviously not playing Mephisto. Oh, <laughs> wow. I didn't even think about that. Dude. Yeah, that's great he would have been smokes. amazing as Mephisto. Amazing. Wow. He would have been great. Wow. But instead, he's GW. <laughs> oh, here we go. so another trailer dropped that sean said brave new world this is captain america 4 um after all the reshoots and all the recasting and i even heard the russos had some input in here which uh made them course correct as well yeah Yeah. that's part that's part of the course that's that's the uh Yeah, that's that's the Bob Iger uh, course correction. It's like, hey, uh, let's talk to the people that help us make hits in the past. Like, I get it. They're not the directors of this one, but, you know, consulting fees are good. And so you just bring them on to consult. Yes, it is. Yes, it is (laughs) indeed. So, uh, yeah, Brave New World, uh, Captain America 4 kicks off. You know, you see Sam walking. Hey, another Lance. one of my favorite shows was Falcon and Winter Soldier, man. So you see him walking, man. I get those vibes again. Like, oh, shit, sure. what we about to get into now? You see yeah. Ross. You got uh, my man's Harrison Ford, another Chicago yeah. land phase. Yeah, man. You know, this the home new debut. They, yeah. they, he just should have done, he should have, they just should have focused on this. Whoever greenlit the last Indiana Jones movie, they should be like, nah, we got him in Captain America. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Like we yeah, got Harrison yeah. Ford and Captain America, we don't need him again as Indiana Jones. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I agree. But now, yeah, the I, people was tripping on her. She's um Israel Israelite, and um I don't know. I heard they switched her character around or some stuff. But some about kinda... they had to, uh, from what I heard, some about she originally had an outfit that had a star the star of david on it. yeah Sa- sabra yeah sabra mm-hmm. she's the um she's kind of like is she's a is uh israeli super soldier mm-hmm. okay um okay. very obscure very very like like you we're talking the, the corner of the of the captain america lexicon here we're talking like maybe a few appearances here and there maybe like a, a few appearances like in a spider-man a few spider-man issues like but not not well known by any right. stretch okay. of the imagination, unless you're like a, a Marvel zombie like I am, and just you know, I used to absorb those guys to the Marvel <laughs> universe, like sit back and, and and like really. So I remember coming to the Sabra page in her white outfit with the fur hoodie and the spikes and the Star David. Yep, I remember all of it. <laughs> okay, now this that I'm was the part that had me trip out. Isaiah Bradley was like, "F this crap." Yes. Now is he on? Oh. Is he under control or some shit? You know, what I mean, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, you know, we don't know. That's crazy. We don't know. We gotta. We gotta. But see um, it. Falcon is in. Falcon is there. Uh, and then yeah, wait, wait, wait. We can't leave that. Leave out your homie. Like these are. It looks pretty tight. There you go, your homie, there, right there. Carlos Cito. Carlos Cito. So um, as GW Bridge. <laughs> now who is GW? <laughs> 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 now, who is GW Bridge? First off, man, let's, uh, he's let's a he, he is a random uh, Shield special ops. He ran the uh, for those who read uh, read the original New Mutant slash X Force run. He used to uh, run with the run the Six Pack, which was a mercenary group that Cable was a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, he he's pretty much just kind of been like uh, assigned all over the Marvel universe. He he's had zero success. Oh, wow. um, he he was supposed to bring in cable, failed. I mean, he failed at bringing in cable for like ten years, maybe fifteen. Um, that it was like not not ten years in the book time, but like just overall, like like man, it's like ten years later, this guy's still chasing cable. Uh, <laughs> uh, they sent him after uh, after Frank Castle. He was on like the Frank Castle, the Punisher uh, takedown squad, failed. Um, you know, he he he's just kind of a. Uh, 
a mad guy, like nineties, a nineties guy who never garnered any attention, just kind of like a shield. Like whenever you wanted random shield cannon fodder, you would like go to GW Bridge. So basically, he's one of those characters that look good visually and sound good on paper, but actually turn out to be Basur. Yeah, I mean that he's he is just a special ops guy. End of the day. Random Good. special ops guy that they, I mean, he, I think he was on a Hulkbuster unit at, at some point. Mm. So maybe they'll play up that angle when it comes to, to Thunderbolt Ross that maybe he ran with, because he did run with Thunderbolt Ross for a little bit. So I think he was on one of the many, many Hulkbuster units that have existed. As I don't know, I would have given up after the first multi billion dollar blunder. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> like how be like how much how much military time we're gonna waste chasing the Hulk down guys like come on right. like how how yeah like how many how many tanks does he have to hurl over a mountain for us to get the picture? <laughs> yeah, how much yeah. overtime you got paid damage control? That's the real question. Man. Right, right. That's why they right. that's why they kept the Hulk in the desert for so much of the Marvel universe because they you you really can't get the Hulk in like put him in New York. The entire time, it's right. Yeah, that's that's not good for the city of New York. Definitely not. <laughs> right. Hell no. Nah. So, yeah, so that's why um, he's speaking of hoax. Yes, we get the red. Speaking one. of hoax, we see the red Hulk up in this boy. Mm -hmm. Harrison Ford. Bit. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. we also see and maybe a glimpse and hear of the leader. Yeah, I mean, well, the actor is yes, back, bro, right? Um, like Nelson. Yeah, the same the same guy who played him in the in the Norton Hulk. Yeah. So, so you, I think we're getting them. I think I think that's going to be part of this. I think we're getting. I think Marvel is trying to unleash a few more gamma beings on us, which is is good because there are several active gamma persons in Mar in Marvel. So, right, they already introduced Scar. Right, they, we got Scar. We got we got she Jennifer Hulk. Walters. We got Bruce yeah. now. I mean, how long how long before we get like Amadeus Cho? Like it's yeah, gotta be, yeah. that's got to be coming around the corner with the, with all the young Avenger seeds, right, um, right popping right. up, um, right. you know. So I, it's I'm not mad at that if they if they do a little more gamma population. We got the abomination, so why not get the leader? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. true. No, yeah. I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this trailer. And like I say, um, hey man, I ain't gonna watch shit else. So this is <laughs> all I needed to see. I, I seen. <laughs> I seen GW Bridge. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, <I> <laughs> but I saw the Red Hulk, and that's that's perfect. So I, I want to see what happens uh, with that and how that go. And yeah, so we'll see you. I don't like the release date. We got to wait for February. This should have been an October little joint, November joint too, but it is what it is. We'll wait I for mean, next year. I mean, they're trying to keep some space, um, I think, and, and I think... Bob Iger was telling the truth when he said we're going to put out less, less product, mm -hmm. but what we put out will be more quality. So I think right. they're going to, I think they're going to put the, the PR machine behind this. I think they, I think, I think we're about to see like, a, you know, almost a, a good six to seven months of like hardcore, like promote, not, not like over the top promotion, but like filtered in like they normally do. It's like yeah. filtered, it's mm -hmm. filtered over the months. It's to, it's like they hit you with a trailer, then it go, then they go dark. And then all of a sudden, something to pop up somewhere like you can get a Falcon, uh, Captain America four thing over here. Then the second right, trailer yeah. will come out, and then like you'll right. see some, you'll see a pop vinyl, you'll see the toy, you see the uh, the toy solicitations. Before mm -hmm. you know it, you will see on Target shelves. We see you know the new the new Captain America outfit on right. on a toy, and right. then before you know it, it's January full promotion machine, Super Bowl promotion. Then bam, February, Valentine's Day weekend. Cause look at the date. They trying to guarantee us a date movie for for, for the nerds out. They trying, babe, 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 we going to, babe, we going to see you. Babe, 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 new world. We got that. I don't care. We could, we could do whatever else that day. But I'm seeing that. Man, right. Movie. I mean, that's and it's gonna be across the spectrum, all walks, all all nerds, uh, nerds of all types, uh, taking dates to see this movie. From from the straightest to the straight to the queers to the queer, they're all going. Everybody's going. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> Everybody's going. Everybody's going. <laughs> Everybody's going. There will be no holdback. Everybody's going. It's just Deadpool and Wolverine will be the exact same way. It's just closer. And yeah. what mm. this does is it's giving whatever they do in Deadpool Wolverine, it's gonna give us from then till Cap 
until Captain America four to talk about what they're doing is no. We got Agatha. We got Agatha in October. We do have Agatha in October. I'm just talking movie wise. I'm just so okay, like, movie, like, but, like 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 movie wise. Like like they're really good. They're they're giving space for Deadpool and Wolverine to run its full gamut of popularity. Right. And I'm going to tell you, um, they actually did do a little a little screening of Deadpool and Wolverine. Of course. And they, they couldn't did. show the whole movie. They showed like the first thirty to forty minutes. That's it. You know what I mean? Like that's it. And um, from what I heard. They said, this is, this is it. This is it. It's going to change Marvel. It's, it's definitely a dynamic changing movie. Um, from what they seen first 30 minutes is pretty much, yeah, this is, this is going to be the shit. So uh, I got my gears ready. At first I was ignoring all this information and just been playing <laughs> the cool, but now nah, I'm ready to go, man. No, I yeah, my, wait, man. I'm my, ready to my go. Antenna, <laughs> my, my antenna is up for uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. I, yeah. I'm uh I didn't watch the last trailer, uh, although I did see the uh I you know just because you know the internet exists I saw the saber two screenshot uh screenshot, you know Tyler Main okay, right, I saw right, it, right. you know but I'm but I was but I'm okay with it. I smoked but, it away though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I it, it, it uh I, I was uh, but I'm okay with it. I was like I was like oh is that the big thing everyone's talking about? Like, eh, all right, and I yeah. but I expected so. it. I kind of expected it. Um, honestly, I'm surprised that the Lee Schreiber didn't show up. Um, you know, leaks and stuff is going to always appear. <laughs> so, you know, you just got to, with the internet, you can't avoid. Sometimes you get on the internet, that's the first thing you see. You know what I mean? So cover your eyes and uh, just press the exit button <laughs> when you see shit like that. But Right. So, yeah, man. Um, so this next trailer I want to talk about. I don't know if this piece is a sequel to which movie? Is this Gladiator? Yeah. Or American right. Gangster? Because <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker is like Frank Lucas had a time machine and he went to Rome. It's like <laughs> Roman Gangsters too, man. So what was it? Uh, I'm the, talking the, about the Equalizer in Rome. Is that <laughs> yeah? The equalizer in Rome. The equalizer in Rome. Because he because he's done three of those now. That means he's committed. Right. Yeah. He's on. He's yeah. on three Equalizer yeah. movies. That means he's committed to that role. Yeah. Yeah. He he's or down for the get down. Yeah. yeah. And I I just put the Equalizer movies as Man on Fire without him dying. <laughs> <laughs> or then again, we could have a big what if? What if in Training Day he didn't actually die? He got oh. trapped back to time. Oh, why there he is. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, man. It, when you see this guy, Denzel's a great actor. I take nothing away. But he, yeah, they gave him the money, say, hey man, do you. And he's yeah. definitely doing him, man. This trailer looked hilarious because like I said, it feel like He's stuck in time. <laughs> he he and, got sit out there. He on a different mission. <laughs> and it's it's a rare Ridley Scott sequel. Like Ridley Scott don't normally go for number twos. That's what I was um yeah having an off camera conversation. It's like so Ridley Scott is this is his movie and yeah um, this yeah this is a sequel. He don't usually do stuff like that. Yeah, and, all the time. And, I bet you this is one of those things we find find out that this was all already written as part of like his gladiator story, and that he just chose right. to tell one part of it. Okay, well that's fair. Because I mean, you know, every you, director should have a yeah have a story. I would say. Yeah, I think it's one of those cases, like kind of like how you know pe people will write, um, like like writers do all the time. They they write like uh, the series of novels sometimes before the first one even comes out. They'll have like book two written, not knowing how book one is going to go. And then book one maybe takes a long time to catch on. And then once it finally does, they drop this, they drop the next one. And they'll be like, oh, he must have just wrote written as you find out in the interview. Like, oh, no, I wrote it same time as book one. I just, you, you guys just made me popular. Thank you. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I think it's the same. I think really Scott's doing the same thing. He's like, yeah, you know what? I've, I've had this story on deck for a while. Here, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Because he's, yeah, you know, he's one of those directors that can ahead. probably just go into a studio and say, hey, I'm really Scott. This is what I want to do. 
look at my look mm-hmm. at my resume and they'll just be like yeah here's really he's really scott he can do what he want to do do what he want <laughs> yeah. he do what he want here's the interesting part on this though the interesting part on this sequel if you notice you got a, outside of denzel you got a nice little fair share of mcu energy up in here because you got let's so- go you got Sir Pedro Pascal up in here. He plays the general slash main villain up in here. Uh, Joe Quinn, who is going to be a human torch. He plays one of those albino twins that he um, conversates with throughout the trailer. You also got a uh, homegirl from Moon Knight uh, who was with the wings. I guess he she plays the love interest of the main character, the, the warrior chick or what have you. And um, a couple of other people I want to say that are in here. Um, the black actor who did uh, Spartacus TV series, mm-hmm. he was all, he's in this also, and he also was in uh, The Incredible Hulk. He played uh, the one black general who was kind of chastising uh, Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> too, supposedly, so... Got a fair share amount of MCU energy up in here, but uh, the main we got actor, a fair share of big hitters in here, man. Yeah, you know, this is really oh, yeah. Scott style, you know. Yeah, yeah, this is this is really Scott. Like he yeah. he he gets big names. This is what he does. Yeah. yeah. So people were tripping on the music on the trailer, the Jay Z Kanye. Yeah, yeah wow. it, it takes wow. you out of the it it takes yeah. you out of the period. Um, yeah. It takes you out of the I, Well, I think this trailer was too long, for one. Um, I, I, if you kind of yeah. get the sense of the whole movie, it's like a three-minute trailer. Um, yeah. I think the trailer was too long. I don't like time pieces when they put modern music in it, but this isn't the movie. Right. This is the trailer. So um, yeah. i quite sure really Scott isn't the type of director that throws that type of shit in, in the movie itself. So, um, no, nah, I look at this as a trailer and just trailer music shit, you know what I mean? And try and get their point across. So, I ain't going to trip. Really, Scott ain't that dude. So, uh, watch yeah, the cause movie. Yeah, because I mean, because like, but we with watched the- Denzel acting like this, you never know. He might break out the boom box and, and <laughs> might you know, start throwing some craps or some shit, man. You never know. So, uh, <laughs> all I want to see him do is go off on a room and do his uh, famous finger point, be like, I told you to execute him. I told you to execute him now. Right. <laughs> execute him now. Yeah. That's yeah. Alpaca. <laughs> Alpaca, you yeah. got to block that shit. <laughs> right. Cuz yeah, he he is good for the he is good for the finger point in almost yeah. every movie he's in. He he points his finger at somebody. Right. You gotta, yeah, you gotta do it. You gotta be direct. So, uh, and, 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 Mal- and Malcolm X, he's gonna break his finger when he was like pumping it on that table. Like, we was going, his fingers was, I was like, like damn, dude, you're gonna break your fingers. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So, nah, this movie looked fun. I know it's supposed to be serious or something. It's like an epic, but this movie looked fun to me for so many yeah, other does. reasons in my head because I'm crazy. But it's I mean, the first different. Gladiator was was dope. I like the first Gladiator movie. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I really like the first uh, Gladiator yeah, too. It was it that was a dope was. story. That that ending, man. It was like, how could you not like that? I was like, man, what a what a way to go out. Check it out, y'all. Um, when this come out in November. I would definitely. It's already flying her, flying her certified trailer. So uh, I'm going to check this out. And have the, some fun. So um, the next trailer, though, I don't know if this a fun trailer, man. Y'all, this y'all speed, man. I'm tired of this shit too, man. Y'all been putting me on movies, having me watching this shit, man, giving you, me nightmares. You were the you were the one that said, man, horror movies. Ain't scary. So then we point you towards the scary stuff. And you complain about the scary stuff. You can't you can't have it both ways. You can't ask for hot for extra violence, and then I show you extra violence. And you're like, I ain't want that much violence. Well, how much violence is the right amount of violence, Kyle? Moderate, how, much, moderate, how, much moderate. how much is the right <laughs> amount? How much is the right amount? I don't know. Because like, I hear you go. Man, I, 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 I hear you complain about it. The lack of like, oh man, that that wasn't no, that wasn't even scary. That wasn't even scary. Now, point you towards the scary, you be like, man, I don't know what's wrong with you, man. Y'all be watching this. What's wrong with y'all? How y'all? That's scary is sick. Get sick. Sick like, and scary. Yeah. In in the words in the words of uh to, to quote one of my uh, to quote Master Shake, murder is scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Whatever, man. So, all right, man. There's this trailer, this movie that actually getting a lot of hype, man. Um, it's getting some legs to it. <laughs> the movie is called Long Legs. That's what the pun is about. So, I uh, have, yeah, I want to check this out. Same. Yeah, Long Legs is on my list. I like. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I want to see that. Y'all know the premise or anything? Because I don't know shit about it. I, I've only seen a teaser. I haven't even seen the full trailer uh, yet. I've only seen, like, the 30-second um, teaser. Oh, okay. Well, the, from the get gist that I've got, uh, Nicolas Cage is a serial killer up in here. But, oh. like, barely recognizable. And he, oh. we all know how Nicolas Cage rocks, so it's like, this is a performance that, you know, you've never seen him before go this route. Ooh. We've seen him in the horror realm, but to the route of where he's like the serial killer type. Yeah. Oh, it, we're not like going to have serious. This yeah, is I, serious. I wonder how they're going to have him cage out, though. Is he going to do it? Is he going to have his classic Nick Cage moment? <laughs> Man. Uh, maybe. Serial maybe killer? Not, I don't know. Um, the lead actress you see right here, I remember her from that movie, It Follows. Mm-hmm. Above the little horror yeah. joint. Yeah, she was in it follows. Yep. Yeah, so she's like an up and coming screen queen. Uh, I think her name's Monica Monroe, if I'm mistaken. Uh, you also got a legendary black actor Blair Underwood up in this piece plays a FBI agent trying to help hunt down Cage. Um, I, ho- I hope he's a better FBI agent in this than he was in Set It Off. Well, he was a bank. Teller. He, he oh, he's a bank teller. That's right. He was a bank, he was, yeah, like, he, he's a bank teller. He, yeah, he was a bank teller. He That's right. He was a bank teller. I take that back. Yeah, because I was about to say, he like, oh, that shit, right? Yeah, didn't he? Like, just go ahead with the money. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, That's right. He was a bank guy. That's right. But we're on the street, though, is that this is getting a lot of love as being one of the scariest serial killer movies since Sounds of Lambs. So it's like late night in the devil. Might have a little bit of comp this year for scariest movie or in most interesting horror movie, I should say. I am That's I'm fair. definitely yeah, I'm definitely in I'm definitely in to see it though. I yeah, I wanna so. I I my my curiosity is is at one hundred on this one. Yeah. So I'm I'm same we'll here, guys. I guess you guys are bit the bug, so uh now don't yeah, complain about the shit. bug now. Now so now it's public record. <laughs> <laughs> now it's public record. I don't want no more complaints. <laughs> no more complaints. If you say you got bit by the bug, like you if you dialing in, don't well, don't it's uh, curiosity now. I'm you That's how it's that's how it starts. That, that's how it starts. That's how it starts, it's curiosity. That that that's how it starts. It's like you know, I, I that's how that's how it starts though. You see something, you're like, Well, I'm curious to see how this goes. You're like, Oh, well, that was hyper violent. How do I feel about that? Then you, you give yourself a couple uh, days, you're like, I'm gonna watch this ne- other thing. If I like this thing, and then before you know it, you're just there. Cause you should know by now that you have to tap into your violent nature. You really yeah, have I to did, you know, you but... motherfuckers. I truly <laughs> did tap into my fucking violent nature. All right. I did it. <laughs> Okay. What did you All right. Hear? So yeah, I, I checked it out. <laughs> I, I, I have to calm down. <laughs> nah, man. Um. Okay. Brilliant concept. Mm-hmm. Really dope. But I wish I don't know. It's an A twenty four movie, but it seemed like it was. They didn't have a big, but I didn't have a big budget for this, right? So, I, I, it was supposed to be like kind of stripped, stripped down, bare bones, taking it back to, you know, guerrilla, kind of like that. Uh, I won't say guerrilla filmmaking, but like the spirit that Friday the Thirteenth has, super independent, yeah. like like on your grave type shit. Like yeah, like movie. like we did, yeah. we everything we did in this, we did by hand. We was actually right. out here in these fields. We we, we right. spent we spent right. a month in the forest, you know, like that right. sort of stuff. Right. Like, and that was the field. Like, so uh, you. Well, go ahead. No, I was saying like OG Texas Chainsaw, like the very first yeah, Texas Chainsaw, yeah, yeah. some of that. So all those vibes was there. Um, you follow this killer. Uh, he comes out from the ground and shit, and then you're just in his perspective. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's really interesting because it's kind of video game-ish in a way, too. 
mm. you know, because actually the Friday the 13th video game is an option that you could play as Jason and you yes. can chase down the uh, victims, which I love. I don't play as victims. I play as Jason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I always play as the killer. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, that was similar to this movie. So, you know, you see these other characters and stuff, but you hear off conversations and things of that nature, you know, they follow them a little bit and then it gets back into just to, you know, to, to tether the story, they yeah. will have to follow the group a little yeah, bit. You have to. Yeah. But then it trails back to the killer and that's really dope. I really like that concept. And, um, I say it was kind of low budget because I, I, there was a few flaws that I had with it. Um, I wish it was more killing. Okay. And I wish the ending was better. And the way it ended was just so off. It felt like y'all didn't have no money for this. So what the hell? Y'all budget ran off at the end or y'all pissed off the editor or some shit. Or <laughs> or they may have been looking to do what horror movies used to do, like the old hammer films. They would just stop. Yeah. Like right. after they stabbed Dracula in the in the in the heart, it would just stop. Mm. Like you didn't get any, you didn't there was zero follow up closure. They were like, no, the Dracula's dead, movie's over. Right. <laughs> like, like and but it wasn't how, no finale like that it wasn't a finale like that it was like a real um exposition at the end and then it ended mm -hmm. you know what i mean so yeah i i don't know i don't i, I feel the ending i didn't feel the ending i, I think they I, from, I think they went they went too artsy for the ending probably, probably. But little, little they had hard. the elements of the Friday the 13th. Um, mm -hmm. Even at that last conversation, I kind of felt like that that was due mom. You know what I mean? So right. it, it's there. It's there. It's dope. I love the concept. I just wish it, it needs some more money. So hopefully if they do a part two and they got some more funding behind it, you know what I mean? It'll get better. But uh, as of Friday the 13th did, you know, like you said, first mm -hmm. it was real indie shaky yeah. camera shit you know what i mean and then it evolved to what it evolved to so um yeah it was dope uh, the killing man the killing though when it got to killing in violent nature it was motherfucker like dude there was some wild shit like how the fuck <laughs> cartoon type killing man so it was like, yo, <laughs> we, <laughs> well you see this shit because it's jason you know jason got some wild kills you know where yeah, my he favorite did. you got the uh sleeping bag and slam down on the tree and shit. You know what I mean? Like Jason had some wild kills. Freddie had wild kills. So they're going to match that. And um, and I know you guys, the terrifier and all that. I know those some wild kills there. I haven't got oh, to that though, yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, the, what, what art, the, what, what art, the, what art the clown does is just, that's just porn. That's violence porn. I don't know what the violence porn. I, I'll be I the first to tell. That. I'll be the first to tell anyone the ter like the terrifier you have to you have to have the stomach, um, yeah. You have to you have to have the constitution because some of it's not even bloody, it's just gruesome. It's just yeah, like you see this one kill in violent nature. I think I haven't seen the terrifier yet, but there's one of the kills in there with that old girl. You you I think it might reach up in that rank reach so, up in that rank okay yeah 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 so you guys check it out i want you guys to check it out and we'll come back to that and yes. um i want to hear you guys opinions because you know i guess i'm the guinea pig i check out shit first and then i come to the professionals <laughs> <laughs> right I'm yeah I mean, that's... My wits, guys explain it <laughs> yeah that's, i mean that, that violent nature is on my list long legs on my list uh arcadia another nick cage horror film is on my okay. list okay Cool. Yeah, I, so, I, I want to see that. Nick Cage has been has been traveling the B horror circuit a little bit lately, and it's a good thing. It's it's good. a good thing because some of some of those it's, films it's his career. Yeah, some of those films have actually been really decent. The his uh the color of night, I'm sorry, the color from space. I mm. highly recommend watching uh color from space. It's it's an adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft story, one of the, one of the one of the most famous H.P. Lovecraft stories at that, um, oh. which is pretty much like. Star stars fall from the sky. Weird mm. things happen, and it's yeah, it it is it is really really solid. Like his yeah. his performance in that is really solid. Mm. Um, okay, highly right. highly recommend. So Arcadia, what's what's Arcadia? It um, looks like he's him. It's him and two kids. Uh, he it's it's like a father and two kids, and he's uh he's he's protecting them from some wildness out here, 
and it, uh, I've only seen the trailer one time, but it, it definitely uh, left an impression. Like, okay, I think I'm gonna check this out. Okay. Well, I good sir actually saw the movie last night via oh. Shutter. Oh, oh, and, oh, it's on Shutter. Then I will see it tonight. Yes, <laughs> and um, basically, you you got it right for the most part. This is kind of like in a post apocalyptic type world, I like say Walking Dead or whatever. Mm. But with what they're dealing with is like it's almost in the vein of in a quiet place, but not in with the creatures. So it's not like you know they're it's not so much a sound thing with these mysterious creatures. It's more so they come out at night. Mm-hmm. And they can come, out, come at night. out at night. Well, you know the freaks come out at night. Of course, of course. And you know, <laughs> and you know the crazy part is <laughs> these uh, creatures is that is not really fully explained if they're like supernatural or out of space. I want to assume out of space because of you know how they move and how they run about or what have you. Um, Nonetheless, you know, Nick Cage, he kind of scales back on, you know, the Nick's Cage wildness. I mean, he still does bring his tour de force performance up in here, but, you know, he kind of scales it back to, you know, being like. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't cage out. <laughs> he doesn't. You don't, no, he don't he need to cage out, out in every movie. No, he, he, don't, he, don't, he, he does not. He does not. I just, think it, I just think it's hilarious that he tends to cage out. Right. Right. And he doesn't need to cage out there. He just tends nah. to cage out every movie. So, so this is one of the few where he doesn't do it uh, too tough. He does nice. it more like a serious concerned father, you know, trying to teach his sons the ropes about survival, what have you, especially in the current state that they're living in. And then, you know, dealing with, you know, people down the road who seem to be cool and seem to be nice, but then you know, next thing you know, they can be just as, you know, vicious as well. Because, you know, mm-hmm. it's they're in, they're in a world of survival of the fittest at this yeah. stage. So, but now Arcadians are definitely check out for a creature feature. If you like the dystopian sci-fi future stuff, it's definitely recommended. This is for you. Yes, So sir. is it Fly Nerd certified? Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. All right. And, I, like uh, I said, I will be watching it this evening. And speaking of Sir Cage, I checked out another joint off of uh, AMC Plus called Sympathy for the Devil. Now, right. this is a joint day where she co-stars with uh, Joel Kinnaman, a.k.a. Rick Flagg from Suicide Squad movies. And basically, from the gist of this, it's kind of like collateral with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx, but it takes place in like the desert of Las Vegas. And it's got yeah. that similar kind of energy where Joel Kinnaman, he's kind of like the a... Trailer uh, makes the trailer make sense now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, Joel Kinnaman is kind of like uh, an expecting father. He's trying to rush to the hospital to, you know, get to his wife because he's about to be a father again or what have you. But um, he comes across Nicolas Cage <laughs> in a uh, hospital um, parking lot. And as you see, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> he's caging. Still, he's caging right there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's, where yeah. That's where he's caging. <laughs> he's caging right there. That's where he cages right there. Oh, the right. eyebrows in that gun. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> <laughs> he ba- sat down with the pistol out. <laughs> and, ba- and basically, throughout the movie, like I said, it gives similar energy to like um, Collateral. And as you watch the movie, you also get a little bit of hints of history of violence as well. Because mm. Cage is convinced that Joel Kinnaman's character is somebody from, you know, a past life. And, you know, Kinnaman's like, I'm not this guy. I don't know who you're talking about. That type of vibe. Oh. So it's a lot of up and down thrills and, you know, suspense with this. Um, well acted by both. And I know some people they have their fair share of criticism of Joel Kinnaman. See, but... that's, that's all him caging. All, all right. them faces, each face. Look at that. Right. He's doing it right there. 
And you know, people in the past have kind of criticized Kinnaman for his work, but in this, this is one of the few performances where he's actually good in. So I do give him mad props on this one, especially acting alongside somebody like Nicholas Cage. It's like you gotta bring your A game. Yeah, you got when he's like this in this mode. Yeah, you have no. But you know what? I choice. I appreciate what I would consider Nicholas Cage's third act. Like starting with like the low budget horror films, then going into like the kind of like I I don't mind poking fun at myself with the you know the one he did with uh, Pedro Pasquale. Um, yeah, right, right. you know like like his second his well I would say his third act. His third act has not been bad. It's just I know how considering that he was once considered Hollywood A list. I know how I know how the industry reviewed this as oh he's he's down, but he's working, which a lot of people can't say he's working and he's getting. He's getting accolades, even if it's not, you know, he's not the top accolade, but he's being appreciated for his work. And I think he, I think right now is the best he's probably been since the beginning. I would right. say this is the best. This is kind of like the prime, you yeah. know what I mean? Or the veteran right. type, 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 type thing. Cause you just mentioned three movies, you know what I mean? Like three fucking movies and he's different in each, in one, each one, you know what I mean? Right. So, so that's professionalism, man. And it's like what uh, Samuel L. Jackson always said. You always work, dude. It don't matter what you're right. doing, you know? You stay I working, care yeah. About, I don't care about the press, you know right. what I mean? And what that's they how, have to say. That's how we got working. Formula 50. What was it? Formula 51 when he was the, the, yeah. the <laughs> whatever movie that was that Sam Sam Jackson movie. He was like in a kilt and was like made a formula or something like that. I was like, what are yeah, you doing, yeah, Sam yeah, Jackson? Yeah. <laughs> but, right. But I mean, he you're right. He stay, he stay working. You never... you. It keeps your name in rotation because now if if yeah. he gets called if he gets called up to something big, he's right there. Like like people say, like, oh look, Cage he's is big. still like like some Hollywood he's studio. Not rusty, you yeah, know, he's not he's rusty. Not rusty. He's ready to go. You know, so you get that call, you be ready. You know, so I mean, oh, I, fuck the could, industry. In in my head, <laughs> in in my head, you could uh, you could still have have him in Ghost Rider because you can just have it be a torch, but you can have it be Danny Ketch. Who works? Who works currently alongside a non-powered Johnny Blaze? Mm, you could do it. There you go. You could do it, and then you, you can, and, you, and you still have you linked to the first one, uh, your, the, the first run of Ghost Rider films, um, which I mean they're they're not good. I'm not saying that they were, but I'm just saying you he could still be that, play that role in a way, if necessary, right. if they want to connect it. They don't have to at all. It's just saying, right. just a, yeah. you know, he he's uh, out here working. Yeah. And that's better than nothing. So, you know, get that work. Get that work. In the indie or, you know, whatever level, man. Indie is better, man, because you I, get I more, agree. Is more way passion projects. Right. There's more passion about the work you're doing. You get to get more hands-on with your cast and crew and stuff. It's more personal mm-hmm. family type, related type um, exactly. vibe. So that's the best work to me. You know, you yeah, might see I, me on set doing, <laughs> hey, hey, Cage. That you, you know, know that's what like even that. even Wes Anderson does stuff like that. You know, there are like lots of Wes Anderson stories and films that studios wouldn't pick up. He's like, I just put out myself. Right. Shoot it myself. Fuck it. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> I mean, that, that's how. And he the, he did. He cut that deal with Netflix for all those short films. He was like, because exactly. he was like, yeah, you know, I feel like putting out my short films. Oh, Hollywood, you don't want to work with me right now because it's short and it's not okay. Well, here, I'll take it over here and do it. And, and you find that you find that platform, and you put your mm-hmm. art, and you get it distributed the way it should be. Right. Now, I don't know. I don't know what studio would say no to a Wes Anderson film, but I mean, but it happens. Yeah. You never know, you, man. Yeah. You it, never know. Because I mean, he's been nothing. Even his, even what I would consider a bad Wes Anderson film is still a success. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, like, like I love the French Dispatch, but the world seemed to not not like it. But it was still a major hit. So it's like, mm. it's, it's, it's like, why would you not continue like to foster this very creative filmmaker's visions? Because I still think Wes Anderson is one of the, like, f- for the opposite spectrum of like all the action directors and these other directors, Wes Anderson is a true art film director. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, like, absolutely. like, like when you think about his films, like, like the life, the life aquatic with Steve Zuzu, that's an art film. Yes, <laughs> that's an it art is. film, one hundred percent. You know, and then right. you know, and what's cool about it is got like that eccentric, dry humor. Yeah, and very eccentric, dry humor. And then when you have names attached to it, like Bill Murray, Willem Dafoe, 
um, trying to think uh, of the hell else. Every is. man, everybody wants to be like either has done or wants to do a Wes Anderson film. Because right. you, you guys like George Clooney, Scarlett Johansson, the names just go on. Like all these people, Jeffrey, uh, uh, Jeffrey, yeah. not Jeffrey Rush, but uh, right. Jeffrey Wright is in is in several yeah. Wes Anderson films. Like Wes Anderson loves that that guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, For real? Norton, yeah, yeah. Jeffrey hmm. Wright is in several Wes and he Wes Anderson films, several of them. Oh wow! Jason Swartz, uh, like is it's uh, like so many names, yeah, yeah. so many names. Like he's worked with so like so many different people. Um, and all I like his films, honestly. I mean, even like uh, Isle of Dogs, his animated films, Isle of Dogs, that was amazing. Yeah, Isle of Dogs was cool. And Fantastic Mr. Fox. That Fantastic was cool. Mr. Fox was cool as well. Yeah. So that was his. Yeah. That yep, was, that was too. that's a Wes Anderson film. Yep. And he works in different mediums. He's not afraid to like, he's like, hey, I want to work in stop motion this time. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you try out everything. You try out, yeah. like you said, each medium. That's that's pretty raw. Yeah. So um <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so um, all right. So sympathy of the devil. Is that fly nerd certified? Yes, indeed. All right, go. It's on the list, especially especially when we check out the ending. Ooh, all All right, all right. Now you got me geek. Okay, all right. So, uh, what y'all want to talk about next? We got a few more items: Um, music or wrestling. Let's uh, hit up the young music there. All right, cool. So, as we were saying earlier, this has been a very exciting weekend. You know, if you check this out on WFNG Fly Nerd Radio, um, we had this conversation about 94, I believe, mm-hmm. and how the impact of the music was just coming out so, like, that was a big year of music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And this past Friday felt like one of those days of 94 because it was just hip-hop music haven. It was like heaven. It was like, oh, shit, yeah. man. Look at the West. <laughs> All these tunes, man. Oh man, <laughs> felt like Morty and shit. So, uh, yeah, few projects drop. Oh, uh, the hell? one that I was really anticipating, you know, um, dropped like three singles off the bat, and I was just like, "All right, we're give me the full dish now. I'm ready." Oh damn it! Yeah, man. And boy, did it ref- deliver. It delivered, dude. Yes, I'm referring yes, to uh, Chicago own common. Formerly known as Com Sense. Well, he Com Sense now. I don't give a fuck. I call him Com Sense. <laughs> this is Buckethead Rashid. Yeah, Buckethead <laughs> Bucket Hat Rashid. You see Buckethead Rashid, it get dangerous in that book, Right, you get man. dangerous, yeah. man. We, when Com got the bucket hat on, it's on. Like, damn. <laughs> you want that smoke, Crack. man. Fuck that. <laughs> so uh, Buckethead Rashid, known as Common and Pete Rock. Legendary hip hop producer, man. He laced this motherfucking album, man. Yeah, he oh man. Woo. Dude, I don't, you know me, I don't be throwing out that word classic out automatically, but this here, God's it's classic, man. dude. Yes. It's classic. It's a solid classic work. When we talk about solid production, we talking about like uh, grooves. We talking about samples, but it's not like the chops, you know, soul samples, but it's right. not the obvious chops. You feeling the groove, man. You feeling the bass, you know what I mean? You feeling drums, drums, drums. Oh my gosh. Pete Rock has drums, you know what I mean? He have signature drums. And you hear this stuff on these records and the combination of the production and common vocals is amazing. You know what I mean? He's right in the pocket on every song and in punchlines, metaphors, similes, double entendres, triple entendres. It's the calm sense, man. We used to listen to Resurrection and you you hear a song and you just catching another punchline like, God. Damn it, man! I got you, man. How many you got? <laughs> this is the this is the calm, man. I love it because it's is it's uplifting and make you think. It's positive, and it's him seeing shit, man. I hope he get every accolade he deserve after this yes, album. Yeah. And I'll yes. leave it like that. So y'all go ahead. How you feel about it, Chance? 
man, I just love this joint. Like you said, it brings you back to the 90s style of hip hop. And this, along with what Lupe did a few weeks back, is a testament to show that hip hop ain't never dead. All this bullshit about hip hop dead, this and that, nah. These now are that's two- the fly nerd group existing, man. Hip hop will never <laughs> die, man. Fuck Absolutely. that, no. And these are two pillar prime examples of why hip hop ain't dead. Plus, in addition with Common and Pete's collab, it's like the best collab since to me, uh, P Rock and CL Smooth, as far as what they do. And of course, I know it's like uh, apples and oranges comparison, but in terms of lyrical flows and stuff like that, it's it's just amazing what P Rock do with, with that lyrics. That is that is a fair comparison. Um, you know, uh, when Pete Rock mainly done projects with CL Smooth, that was his MC. You know what I mean? Right. And um, he light skinned just like Kanye. Kind of- <laughs> 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 so you know it is what they yeah. talk about they rap about no. ladies and all that shit too so right. it's, it's the same it's the same vein and maybe that's why it worked you never know yeah. you know it may trigger some type of things like that so uh oh. nah yeah, I will compare it to that but P-Rock has done work beyond um CL yeah. Smooth you yeah, know he's what a, I mean like, it's yeah. been some really dope P-Rock collaborations out here this one just happens to take the top of the order now oh yeah like, yeah, like I, I thought, like, like I felt, I felt his comp, I felt his collab with Sky Zoo Retro Pons, and that was a dope, solid album. It was a solid yeah, piece of work. The the beats that Pete laced him with were really, really dope. Sky Zoo was in the pocket, and he standard Sky Zoo, but he, this just felt, this had a feel. Yeah, this it, <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it just had some. It just had, oh, it, it had goodness. that thing. It had. But that, that was good. years ago, and you know, I guess work is work, you know, but. It's like I know where you're going. That's why I, cut, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, yeah. It's the TLC, bro. It, 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 it's the TLC and the production and the concern. It, 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 I don't know. I think it's a lot of things into it. I said it before. There's an energy going on out here right now, and um, if you're not tapping into that energy, then shame on you. You know, we had the MC battle. We got these collabs going on. You know, and more stuff down the pipeline. You know what I mean? Like right. there's a certain dope energy that's going on. And if you're a creative, an MC, producer, photographer, whatever the fuck you are, you should be tapping into this because it's really, it's really good. And I, I feel like I'm sorry to cut you off, man, but no. I don't know. I feel like Pete, like it's due diligence, man. He had to show him, not show him prove, but do his job, man. That's all. And I he did it. And yeah. he did it. And he, not, a, not he did it. Everybody, everybody did their job and did their job good. Yes. That's. I mean, it's a quality project. Everybody, everybody is is talking talking about it. Bumping. At least a lot of people I know. Um. Uh, and that's and that's across the spectrum from the casual hip hop fan to the hardcore hip hop fan. Mm-hmm. I've heard. I've heard people like I've had people surprise me and say, "Hey." Uh, and I, I listened to that new comment. I'm like, you listen to Com? I didn't, had no idea. You know, <laughs> I had I had like, legit someone from my D and D group. They were like, uh, they were like, yeah, I listened to the new Com uh, uh, Pete Rock album, and I didn't even know they listened to hip hop like that. Like it totally was like I had no idea because like I had never really talked music with them mm-hmm. before. It's our first chance to like we really talked about it, and I was like, okay, like, and they knew like they was like, yeah, you know. And then I went and checked out this and that, and I was like, okay. All right, like this move, this album is touching is touching across the spectrum, and that's what it should do, and that's what hip hop's supposed to do. You know yep. what I mean? It's supposed to get everybody attention and get everybody up on it. Damn, it feel good to see people up on it. You know what I mean? Like that's a real thing. You know, and um, like I said before, I want Common to get all the props. Give him all the props. Because he wanted to go solo, but he threw Pasta Noose on there, Bilal, you know, his girl Jennifer Hudson, harmonizing his stuff on there. But Pete, with even with the scratches, it sound cold. Like, he's scratching, you know, he scratches Dilla on one song. I almost lost my mind. It's like, dude, this nigga, <laughs> like, Pete on it, man. So, nah, man. Speaking of Dilla, Dilla used to call Pete Rock for advice. You know what I mean? So, that that mm-hmm. should tell you who the master 
shit is. You know what I mean? When it comes nope. to this production thing, so expect nothing but perfection. And this is a volume one, so I'm already ready for volume two. I'm ready for it. Come on, bring let's it, go. Tim. Bring it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I, I look forward to. I, I hope this is just <laughs> the first of many collaborations um, for for these two. I really yeah. do. I, I hope. I hope this is one of the. I hope this is a um, uh, uh, a Murs Knife Wonder situation where they just put out a f- quite a few projects together. Um, I would like that. I would like that. Yeah, I, I think I. Or think CL I would Smooth, that just make much. it a group, man. Just y'all, just just make it a group. And y'all just said. keep it moving because ain't nothing Tom else. Yeah, common beat. Like, Tom well, Pete. what else y'all going to do? You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's funny how the world moves. Pete produced the bitch in you. That he this sure song, did. the Ice Cube, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. So that was kind of like a predecessor of to what it is today. Like he, that's an important song in the man career when you're going off of someone head like Ice Cube. Like yo, you know what I mean. A lot of producers were scared to produce that record, and P said, "I'll fuck around and did it." And the first beat he made, he got it. He did it, and here we are today. So uh, keep that in mind, man. You know, I, I would like Pete and Kyle might as well just keep on rocking, man. If it ain't yeah, broke, well, don't fix man. it. Might as well. You know? So because you got LL working with Q-Tip. You know, he dropped another single, uh, Passion. Yeah, you and, know, that um, was a... Uh, pretty dope. Th- I think the difference between the two projects, though, is that Q-Tip is executive producing the LL album because that Passion it was done by Swiss. Mm. Oh, so he's not uh, producing every song. He's not. He's he's just overseeing the project and how it sounds. Okay. Uh, so he. But it, it's he still prob- fair enough because yeah, it's fair. When yeah, we're, it, do that. He made the infamous. He made Illmatic. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What yeah. I mean? so, yeah. yeah. No, I, it's not. It's not a bad thing. It's just a little bit of a different collaboration where Common mm. Pete. It was every every song is a piece of them. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like like it's them yeah. them with with. This will obviously is the LL project, so it'll be 100% LL with Q-tip okay. guiding the mission. Okay. You that's know, so it, it, and that, and it, yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. It was just one of those things, like, when I listened to the beat to Passion, I was like, this does not sound like a, like, tip. I was like, and first I was didn't. like, yeah, that's I was, like, I was tipping in a different bug. bag. I was like, I was like, what bag is tipping? <laughs> and then, and then when you listen to the, then I went back and listened to it a, a second time. He said Swiss. And he, he says, Swiss. yeah, he says Swiss. And I'm like, this is a Swiss beat. Now I really hear it. Like, ah, yeah. I hear the Swiss in this. It, it was, it was just missing. You know what? Q-Tip didn't let Swiss yell on the track. That's right. why, that's that's why we what, ain't know. Cause, 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 no, cause, you know. cause how many times, and, and, and man, I do like a lot of Swiss beats. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a talented dude, but how many times he messed up a beat by, by yelling over it? Like, and not in the way that P right. I ain't, you know, I ain't trying to like down producers who do it. Who talk over the no, nah, because it's but about how you do it. It's how he, you do it. He it's does how... that, but it, it goes along with like everything on right. key. As yeah, long as shit is on key, then you're good. You know what I mean? But yeah, Swiss, he uh, play time. Come on, uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right. yeah. It's like like he like sometimes he tries to be a hype man along with it, and it's like all right, nah, all right, dude, just yeah, chill. make the beat and let him speak. You know. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And this is one of those times where it, that was a hundred percent L L spending. He was ripping. That was L. Yeah. That was that was rampage L. That was like that. That was uh. I, I'm about to. That's five, four, three, two, one L. Like I'm about oh. to show you all what 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 I can do. And that, that because uh, he just did an interview with Charlemagne, and he was talking about like that particular record. He had to retrain himself. Of the bar exercise, you know what I mean? Because he'd been so off, you know, he got the radio mm-hmm. show, radio station, I mean, right. movies, TVs, whatever he's doing off handling his other business. You know, sometimes your pen get rusty. So, you know, he had to uh, retrain himself and get back into that to get that song and get to that level. And um, nah, that, that shit's dope because, yeah, once you hear the veterans got to bar up and they're going through the effort to bar up, Oh yeah, he he definitely came with the he definitely <laughs> came with the bars. That's two. It's calm. LL Rakim coming. Like yo, man, what the Ooh, fuck we bro. on? <laughs> fuck we on Lupe on on the tear. Like yo, yo. Like Let I said, it's a certain down. energy surging, and the real niggas are emerging. So yes. 
watch it. It's important. See, that's bars right there. It's Cosgy. So uh, <laughs> let's keep it moving, guys. Um, what other? Uh, Marcia Ambrose, Dre. That's a dope album that came out. Um, yes. Eminem, Eminem just dropped something. Yeah, the death of Slim Shady uh, came out, and I I appreciated him going back to the Slim Shady bag. Yo, he. I didn't. I. You know, the first single I wasn't a fan of. Um, he did drop a single with uh Big Sean. Yeah, and that I, wasn't that great. It wasn't that great. It wasn't. But the that first song on the album was dope, which that, that shocked yeah, me. Re, yeah, Renaissance <laughs> it reminded me of like the old Slim Shady, the first song I'm um, Kill You and all yeah. that shit. Yeah, like he's he, gonna win it. He went it was a content. I was shocked that he went there. Like he, he, I thought he was going to pussyfoot with the slim shade. No, shit, he went full, nine. he went full slim. Yeah, it, and it's interesting because all right, so this is what the fans want. I'm going to give it to you. And he went at the next. And it's the voice and everything, the whole Yeah, style, it's the whole so. it's the whole thing. And it's go ahead. And it's kind of funny because if you go way back in his career, he was trying to bec- he would he was trying to uh, become Marshall, which ended up being the boring side of Eminem. Because mm-hmm. he even said, uh, I've created a monster. Nobody wants to see monster no more. Uh, she Marshall yeah. no more. They oh. want Shady. I'm chopped liver. Like he, oh, he, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he, he yeah. had been trying to get to be boring Eminem. Because I do think Marshall is born. <laughs> I think Marshall is born. Marshall, hey, yo. I'm just <laughs> going to say Marshall this. Born. Marshall is born as fuck, man. It's all right, man. You can, uh, you can do your eight mile. <laughs> but but Slim, but Slim, is but Slim, the, Slim Shady is the dude. <laughs> that's the character. That's what, I mean, think about early Eminem before I, him, before he got signed. This was the dude, you know, Slim yeah. Shady was the motherfucker in these battles, battling Juice. You know, Slim Shady was the motherfucker battling Ryan Fest. Slim Shady was in the Rap Olympics. Slim Shady was at uh, motherfucking uh, by Stretch and Bobbito. Slim Shady was on the Sway show, Wake Up show. Mm-hmm. That's Slim Shady, nigga. You know what I mean? And I remember Prime just just keep playing Slim. Like, he kept playing this shit around me. I'm like, dude, what is this? But you listen to the technical skill and the punchlines and the shock value. That shit's crazy. Like, you know, I ain't going to put them above anything in the culture or anything like that. I ain't doing that, but I am giving credit where credit is. Yeah, you got to give talent. I've never, I have never been one to say that M is not talented. M is a very talented MC. He is a technician. When it comes mm-hmm. to bar skate to uh, making bars, a right. absolute technician. Right. I will never take that away from him. And he can he he can verbally he do some things it. that a lot of that a lot of rappers cannot can do. can really yeah can't do. I, I say but um because yeah he went back into this slim shady thing so he's back to this vulgar ultra aggressive you know. Mm-hmm. Fuck everybody. And I I'm shooting it. at everybody too. Right. Yeah, it was fun. He even said some diddy lines. Like he too said some shit on there. I'm like, well, goddamn. Yeah, right. it was now, it's the it's the guy that we liked. We got the yeah. guy back that we liked. Yeah. <laughs> if it's anything about Eminem, that that's mainly it, man. I want to hear the shit talking and what you're gonna say. And how you say it. And yeah, the lyrical yeah. syllables. It's like any word, like you throw a word at him, he'll find like <laughs> it's it's fine, like a, like a fine tune line of rhymes for it. It's like okay, yeah. it, it's what they used to say about the 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 jazz legends, um, especially about Coltrane, no junk, no soul. Like 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 mm-hmm. uh, like when John Coltrane got clean, his music wasn't as wasn't, it, and it's true. Like I hate to say it, but it's true. His music as a as a jazz listener, it's a difference between high Coltrane and clean Coltrane. I think it's the same with Eminem. When he went, when he stopped talking about all the drugs and the hypervines, when he went like, I, I'm going to be this kind of like poppy rap guy, kind of kind of weird, kind of out here, but I'm, I still want this, I want these pop dollars. And he mm. went kind of clean. He stopped mentioning drugs. I mean, he even had albums called, you know, The Detox. Well, he actually went sober. Yeah, yeah he went sober. I mean? Yeah, so he got, he and he got like sober. He 15 years sober. Yeah. So, um, and that was kind of reflected in the music of this album music. where um, you hear Slim Shady 
on guilty conscience too, saying shit like, you know, you kept me on drugs and alcohol, dude, but I was your life. Like I, you used me, you had me drugged up and now you want to be this clean guy. Like it's very little interesting. And, and he's if good at familiar, that though. He's good at yeah. that. He's good at if that. If you're familiar with like Red Man, like Green Island, when you could hear an artist battle his, uh, not his inner self, his ego, his and all this yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, it was Red his Man versus Reggie Noble. Yeah, Red, Red Man, Man versus, versus Reggie Noble. Noble. Yeah, now it's you the, see it's... the Marshall Mathers versus Slim Shady shit. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the same type. It's a different formula, of course, but same type of uh, things. I'm seeing. I'm in. Yeah. You know, it's the MCN level. You know, so you, you know you got. That's where I'm saying you got respect where respect is due because yeah. there's a craftsmanship to it. And yeah, this is a concept album. I didn't finish the concept album because my biggest thing about this motherfucker is the beats. The beats. I yeah. couldn't get with all these the goddamn beats, man. And it's very I... selfish of you to be making these beats yourself and forcing us to listen to this shit. Well, not forcing us, but <laughs> you know, putting it out there for us to fucking listen to. Because, yeah. dude, you got the alchemist over there. He's your DJ, dude. Like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Dre did some production on there, but I think he get like the corny Dre production and shit. Like Marsha Ambrose sound <laughs> totally different than what he provided for dude, but Dre working. That's dope. Um but yeah, mainly the production drowned me out and I was I was good. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go back to the end because I, I kind of listened to it in two parts. And the second part, I, I definitely will say this the second half of the album beat wise is not as the first the first part is okay. Like the first the first four songs, the beats aren't bad. They're not stand out. They're not bad. But we start getting nothing to the second. Production yeah, yeah, nothing was standout production wise. So standout bars, but not standout production. Yeah, um, more bars. But but... Yeah, as you get to the second half of the album, I was kind of like, all right, I'm going to take a break here, Slim. Like, I'm, I'm glad you're back. It was good talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> High five. <laughs> right. It, it was one of those. Not, it, it was one of those. Now that I didn't see you. <laughs> You know, you leave the crook out early and shit. You go right. say hi and get right. the plate, and then you just yep. like, ah, right, y'all. Well, you know, right, y'all. I gotta yep. go. Like I said, not not out of the seat, you. <laughs> right, I'm out of you. I see you. I see you. Right. And I went to race. I went to the races, man. Shout out to Race Bannon. Um, Woo! For dropping a dope album, uh, I, I, Gorilla I got Tab. It. I, I got so into that that I stopped looking at the track listings and I lost track of who was rapping. I need mm -hmm. to go back. <laughs> Because I recognize Ray's voice, but he had like he had a lot of he had some guests. He had some yeah, guests. Yeah, a few guests. He had, he had Taiwan on there. He had, he had uh, on there. Sleep uh, Sleep Sinatra. You know what I mean? And um, it's all produced by Super Legends. We had the mm -hmm. pleasure of speaking with them as well. You will see that interview on WFNG Fly Nerd Radio. But it was a pleasure chopping it up with them and um, um, you know, picking their brain about Chicago hip hop and creativity and stuff like that. And that album is dope. So y'all haven't checked out that Gorilla Tab. Pick that up. You can't talk about the shit. Can't talk about the crib. You know what I mean? So production dope, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I want to go back um, and 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 actually, I I was into it while I was uh while I was playing Final Fantasy Four. That was my soundtrack for my dungeon run. Was a race album, and that's like, hey, like real. Good, yeah, it was it real like like real talk. <laughs> I had listened. I had just finished listening to Common P Rock again, and okay, right. and then and then I was like, all right, let me. I was like, I didn't gave I didn't gave Common P Rock like three days of listens. Like I didn't immersed myself in this album because I listened to it Thursday at midnight when it dropped. Like I was awake. So I was ah, like, so you like, it was a present. It was a gift. Oh you, yeah, yeah. I, I I had listened to it Thursday. Went to sleep, woke up Friday morning. It was my get ready music, and then uh, and then again on Saturday I was listening to it while playing Final Fantasy fourteen. I went from Common Pete Rock to Race. So and, uh, the Common Pete Rock Auditorium is Fly Nerd certified. Yes, the Race is fly definitely nerds. Gorilla Tab. Gorilla Tab, excuse me, is Fly Nerd certified. Eminem, it ain't fly nerd certified, but you check it out. Yeah, yeah, I think it's. I think you it's. Well, it. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna certify it, but I will say it's not a bad listen, um, especially if you want to hear him back in the Slim Shady bag. Yeah, which he's he, he was 100 in the bag. He was back in that, so it was interesting to see that. So, um, yeah, so uh, 
that's it for the tunes. Yeah, Marsha Ambrose, she uh, is Flying Nerd certified. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, there's a lot of music. That, like I said, it's tons of music. It's a lot of shit um, that I ain't even on yet. You know what I mean? But check out for whatever. If y'all are on something, let, let us know what's going on. Put me on something. So uh, that's up with the Fly Nerd tunes. Let's get into the top of the turnbuckle. Top of the motherfucking turnbuckle. Some wrestling tidbits. I'm gonna leave that to you, Chance. You know what I mean? Uh, there you go. Uh, you know, the uh empire known as WWE, they up here making their moves in this Paul Levesque era, as they call it nowadays. Mm-hmm. So one of the main moves they've been making post WrestleMania, especially, is doing a lot of cross brand promotions. Uh, on the Japan side, you had AJ Styles and EO Sky. They uh, performed a couple of New Japan shows that were very prominent this weekend. Also, in the Mexico side, they had a Mexico Super Show where they got their newest acquisition, whose name is uh, Stephanie Valcour. And Stephanie Valcour is a uh, probably one of the most popular and dominant Mexican woman wrestlers out to date. And, oh, really? You know, yeah, and she's very popular in the indies. Uh, of course, in like the likes of like AAA and international, what have you, and yeah, WWE scooped up. It was like, all right, we finna make you official. So they just this is pretty much her in ring debut under the WWE banner in the Mexico Super Show. They had. Uh, they also had it where they Cody Rhodes defended the uh, undisputed title against uh, Santos Escobar because you know Santos Escobar is very popular, of course, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray Mysterio popped up. Dragon Lee was there. Dominic Mysterio, uh, mm-hmm. basically all the Latino and Latina talent, um, showed force up in this uh, super show, and it was a uh, quite a blast. But yeah, was a couple weeks before that, though, WWE did uh, double duty in Canada. Wolverine's old uh, side of the fence. There was this at the same time Rick Ross was out there. Uh, <laughs> it might have been. I'm not 100, percent but um, yeah, I know they had. Like, you can too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they had uh two back in their money in the bank. Right, <laughs> they had uh two back to back premium live events happening. So last Saturday was a uh, money in the bank, and that was a, uh, of course, expected a. Uh, whole lot of hijinks, a whole lot of high-flying hell-raising. Uh, you had the uh, men's match, which was consisted of Drew McIntyre, Chad Gable, Jay Uso, LA Knight, Andrade. I'm trying to think of who the hell else, but anyhow. This was the Money in the uh, money in the Bank? Yeah, it was the men's match. Right. And a um, whole lot of hell-raising hijinks happening. Uh, Andrade power bombing people through, you know, ladders and such. Jay Uso getting his high flying and spears on, but it was, of course it was the infamous Drew McIntyre who ended up winning it. And yeah. as he promised on the Raw before the pay premium live event, he, he was said gonna do some spin it, shit, and he was gonna try to cash it in on uh. Yeah. So yeah, AKA doing stupid shit. Yeah, 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 that too. And we're gonna get that in the hot set. You should just saved it for later. But yeah. yeah. Wait, what is what is he cashing in? I'm sorry, I, I lost I I, mi- I missed uh, he won uh, the uh, money in the bank. He oh the, the money in the bank contract. Okay. Yeah. But then he cashed it in the same night. Yeah, which a lot of fans thought that was kind of wasted and dumb, but I kind of explained that too. But uh, you had Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental title. Now, I have my money on Braun Breaker, man. What the hell happened? Uh, Sammy showed out, man. Sammy's like, <laughs> he's like the dude you least expect to, you know, pull out some shit and just do the damn thing. And I Braun was giving them business, though. Braun was yeah, that's what I'm shit. saying. Fuck out of here. I hate Sami Zayn. <laughs> <laughs> What what did you say about him last time? He just looked like a regular dude off the street. He looked like a regular dude, man. He's just a regular ass dude just in the ring. Hey, <laughs> straight up, man. Wimp. 
the fuck out of here. And then Braun Breaker, he's pairing I, up. He's I, actually really upcoming wrestler. I really I, like I Braun think Breaker. that's I think that's part of the charm that dude look like a regular average person. Average I think that's regular, part of yo. yeah, like like uh uh what's the name again? Zane. Uh, okay, I'm, Sammy yeah, Zane. Yeah, Sammy Zane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, um, <laughs> Sammy Zayn ended up winning, and you know, by him being a Canadian hero, he couldn't uh, let the Canadian fans down. So you had that. Uh, on the women's side, though, you had now you thought the men got crazy, the women got crazier. Mm-hmm. So you had Eo Sky, Zoe Stark, Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, man. Oh, yeah, no. Uh-huh. Uh, Zelina Vega, <laughs> and um, got who the hell else? But yeah, they were trying to kill each other through that day. You say uh, Tiffany, Tiffany Stratton, yeah. and um, one of the highlights, Eo Sky grabs uh, Zoe Stark, and they're both on the top of the ladder. Grabs. I her. would show highlights, but they be flagging us for that shit. So yeah, they be on that basura. But you know, so mm-hmm. basically, Eo Sky. Suplexes Zoe Stark off the top of the ladder onto a ladder that was sitting crosswords in the ring. And yeah, that was so bad of a bump. Like EO Sky was grabbing her tailbone. That's how hard they hit. And Zoe Stark was like grabbing her back, and they were like in agonizer pain. So the women were throwing see that. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it but was at the, sounds sounds like some real bruising occurred. I mean, I know real bruising occurred, but that sounds like some real bad bruising occurred. Oh yeah, very bad bruising. Like I said, you these ladders bad. wasn't breakable. That, oh, it, no. was, it, it was, was a ladder ladder. like a <laughs> And like I said, you Sky was grabbing ladder ladder. Ball, so I know that she was hurting. But at the end of it all, Tiffany Stratton ended up winning. And, you know, for some eyeball reason, the fans like her, so I don't know why, but it's whatever. <laughs> To me, she like a Charlotte Flair upstart, so that's how I look oh, okay. at it. Okay, right. I'll look but at um, she ended up winning. Then you had um the six man tag Bloodline versus Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. Shockingly enough, the Bloodline ended up winning, and they didn't cheat. They like straight gave the business to Cody M. I mean, Cody yeah. M. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, but, that's uh, because they got the new bloodline, right? Right. They got, they uh, Mr. Two showed out. Right, right, right. He's like the new Samoa bulldozer. Yeah, he's, um, you know, he ain't falling for those tricks. You put him in the headlock, nope. DETs, all that shit, he gonna get right up and do his Fatu shit. So, uh, now nah, he's an issue. So they were just displaying the deadly threat of the bloodline, I assume, yeah. in the storyline. So, uh, yeah, the and heroes got taken out. And it's bad when Randy Orton give one of his iconic DDTs and Jacob Fatu just sit right back just up and be like, up. what? And what else you got for me, huh? <laughs> right, exactly. It's like and Randy Orton <laughs> Wait a minute, you supposed to stay down. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, I don't think an RKO will fade him too much. You gotta to do nah, it twice. He, he gotta have to do it like three, four times. Yeah. To put him out. Yes, all right. but, oh, this uh, guy's a menace. Where's he from? Which uh league is he from? He's from Major League Wrestling. Okay. Okay. So he's from he's more one of the, uh, yeah, more indie side, but he when he when I say he was a goon in that. You're just seeing the tip of how much of a goon he is in this. Of course, they had the, potential, man. Of course, you know, he kind of got some little restrictions about him because he got some real life cases. So Triple H had to pull some strings for him to get him across the border to perform. What do you mean cases? Uh like violent cases, I should say. Um he, he had some scuffles on the streets. Let's just put it like that. He got warrants. Okay. He, yeah, he got. He, oh, he's that shit. goon for real. He a he a goon for he's real. a goon. He's a goon for he's real. Goon, he's a goon. Oh yeah, shit! Right, right. Right. Triple also, H, uh, <laughs> Triple H had a real goon, huh? Yeah. Hey, what Paul Heyman was right there. He ain't hiring these goons and these fucks. Yeah, here you here think? The yeah. We're rising backstage. <laughs> comes from a man oh, who shit. ran TCW. So hey, Paul Heyman said, "You better believe." Right. 
Yeah, but uh, anyhow, the uh, infamous moment of moments happened where Seth Rollins battled Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight title. Pretty good match so far. It was a couple of spots where they kind of missed some cues here and there, but still a good match. Then, of mm-hmm. course, the infamous moment happened where Drew McIntyre said he was going to cash in. So oh, they end up making it a uh, triple threat match, and that was getting some fire. The next thing you know, when Drew was about to hit his uh, finisher, all of a sudden, Sean's favorite former uh, neighbor <laughs> pops up, Mr. Phil Brooks, <laughs> a.k.a. CM Punk, and decides to run a shotgun and whoop on Drew McIntyre. Oh, Phil, yeah, Phil came out to play? Phil, yeah, Phil was yeah. in play? Thank <laughs> you. It was out. <laughs> so yeah, that was all set up shit. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like that part because I, I think yeah. it's like what AMB said. Drew McIntyre deserves a little bit more respect than that, and um, I kind of agree, man. He should have. It was too early. He should have at least kept that. You know what I mean under the wraps. But I get the storyline. I get how it works and stuff like that. He's really building this tension. So um, between him and CM Punk, of course, and, you know, but CM Punk fucked up, too, because now he interfered with Seth Rollins' match. You know what I mean? So um, so kind of logic with all this here is that WWE wants to build up stories where the title isn't always involved. So that's mm -hmm. why they kind of pulled the trigger to what they did with the whole thing of Drew cashing in on the same night. They want to build up this three-ray rivalry between Punk, Drew, and Seth. Because, you know, there's still legitimate heat between Seth and Punk. Mm. Which people mm. fail to get. Because remember, when Punk popped back up and Seth was going off like he was going off, that yeah. was a little too heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, the animosity is still there. So this is just to add in. So who's to say we can get a triple threat between these three in SummerSlam? Mm. Let's see. I'm down for that. Down to but, check that uh, out. The other joint that happened was uh, NXT's Heat Wave. And the main mm. event on that joint was a fatal four way between uh, Trick Williams, a new uh, acquisition in Japan. I will never, I will never not hear that as a pimp name. Never, <laughs> ever, ever not hear that as a pimp name. Tricky. Yeah, Tricky Trick I was Williams. Waiting for it. I was waiting uh, for it. <laughs> former WWE talent, NXT talent by the name Sean Spears, and a former AEW talent who made an impact a few weeks before his debut was Ethan Page. And they had a knockdown, drag out, fatal four way themselves, people putting mm. each other through tables, knocking mm. each other through barriers, and all that stuff. Javon Evans, to me, that boy is going to be like the next black Jeff Hardy. That's how dope this dude is. Really? The way he flies around is sick. And you think Randy Orton is sick with his RKO? Yeah. Brian Evans doing a flying version of the RKO. Really? He he kept Best protect your neck. Yeah, Yeah, protect your fucking neck. Definitely around that boy. And he's only 20 years old. Oh, okay. Now I see what you're saying. All right. All right, bet. Yeah. But yeah. out through all this craziness and insanity, um, Trick Williams ended up hitting his finish move on Javon Evans and on Ethan Page. But as soon as he was about to go for the pin, Sean Spears pulled him out the ring and hold him down. And next thing you know, by accident, Ethan Page falls on top of Javon Evans. One, two, three. Ethan Page is your new NXT champion. Yikes. So, and it's crazy how it went down, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad it happened because they were in, we're in need of a heel champion because, you know, we haven't had a much of a great heel champion since, like, Roman. And, you know, I'm in this space where I'm kind of digging the heel champion runs because it gives more, like, hype and more, you know, for the face to do as far as challenging and all that goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trick was, yeah. was an okay champion. He could have been built up a little bit more. They okay. should have given him a little bit more time to build up more, especially as a baby face. 
I think sometimes it's better when when the heel is the champion and they exactly. make the face kind of climb up and lose. I mean, because like like Hogan lost against Piper quite a few times, as I recall. Yes. You know, Thanks. and 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 that was kind of like I, it was kind of it made the it made the climb up better because some just seeing them get up there, get knocked down, have to work their way back up to even request the match for the title. And then, and then finally, like after a couple few times, they get it. I think that story is better. Yeah, right, exactly. I agree too because, um, like Triple H, he always was the champion for a minute, yep. and even yeah, the best always. from Triple H. I mean, not Triple H, but Stone Cold, The Rock, all of them would lose. That right. dude, Kurt Angle, all of them lose. Mm -hmm. Undertaker, like I got more Undertaker. Yep, lose the Triple H, you know, and um, and it's always best because. It's a selfish thing, but I'd rather for the heel to hold on to a championship than the face because, uh, yeah, you right, y'all right. The face gotta fight hard. You know what I mean? You gotta fight. You gotta lose, and you're gonna keep on fighting use, until you finally get it. Use, like, use you Rocky turn Hill. heel, and then you uh, gotta get beat the same way. Nah. You <laughs> use Rocky rules. Rocky lost in, in the first one. He lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. He lost. I mean, he got. Yeah. He, it took. It took a whole other movie. For Rocky to get his get the title, and he right. earned it. It was an earn. Right. He earned it. Like like he earned it. He, he so I think, I think sometimes that's the better story. And then there are eras though where maybe the face does is the one up top, and the heel works their way up, whether it be through actual skill or trickery or whatever. But because sometimes you do have to turn it around for a little bit, let the face have the title for a little bit while while a heel works their way up. And then sometimes it's interesting when it's face versus face. Sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes, sometimes. it is. Sometimes. sometimes I mean, I mean uh, uh, like uh, Rock and Austin. Mm. Face, yeah. face. Yeah. Face, yeah. face. Yeah. Right. Yeah, face, face. <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm just counting down the time to, uh, excuse me, next year where uh, WWE will be on Netflix and then we get some more uncensoredness some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. But meanwhile, yeah, just if y'all following it, you know, you can check out the pay-per-views on Peacock and, um, you know, check out uh, where Raw and Smack... What's SmackDown on? SmackDown's currently on Fox, but they're going to be moving to USA. So right now, Raw's the only one going to Netflix at the moment. Okay, so SmackDown going to still stay um, on, the, on the network. Okay. All right, so um, any other top of the turnbuckle topics? No, nah, not too much else. I mean, you know, that was those were the main things for right now. We're getting a couple more weeks till SummerSlam happening. Right, right, um, right, right. You know, Cody's supposed to be defending against Solo Sokoa. Okay. Um, Orton may or may not get involved, depending on if he survived uh, this past Friday, because... They put him through the announcer's table while they tied up Cody. Mm. So there's that. And then, mm. of course, you know, before that, Orton was kind of eyeballing the championship still. So, you know, they clamoring to make him heal again to challenge Cody. Okay. Okay, right. So Cody got to fight for his life. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Oh, shit. So, all right, SummerSlam coming up. We will check that out. And give you some further news in in regards to that, but uh, yeah, man, it's been a hell of a conversation, man. I'm yeah, gonna man. um check out the boys. I'm we going. I'm going to wait till the we'll, full we'll, season is over. Yeah, we'll, we'll get so, to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. You know what I mean? But, so uh, check out the boys. But I'm loving it so far. By the way, I am yeah. loving um each episode. Same, yeah. So um, that's why I've been pr pretty much tuned into, and um, yeah, you know, Chicago is popping. It's summertime. Check out your events. There are concerts. There are events going on in your city. Um, we will be out there, out and about as well, and um, checking some shit out. But uh, <clears throat> any last word, guys, before we tap out? Ah, you know, stay drink water, stay weird, mind your business. Same deal, same deal. Stay hydrated. Get your vitamin D if you need it out there. Uh, stay safe out in these streets, especially with the. Uh, current craziness that's going on keep your head on swivel yeah Make sure you and people are safe yeah Just, uh, stay weird and have fun that's right man protect your families uh protect yourself be careful out here don't 
follow these distractions and getting all distracted and shit. You know what I mean? Stay focused, due diligence, uh, do your research. You know, and there's more than two people running. If you're in that game, you know, right. check all that shit out. Project 25, 2025 or whatever the shit is. Yeah, check that out. You know what I mean? You know, just be informative, man. You got, you gotta you check to. out shit. You know, don't just go yeah. by what you've seen on the TV and stuff. You do some in between, in the lines uh, research. Uh, on the, in regards to that, thank you for everyone tuning in. Uh, please tune in to uh, WFNG Fly Nerd Radio. We have some great interviews. Had some great episodes. Shout out to Prince Poe, shout out to Queen Heroine, shout out to Organized Confusion, shout out to Juggernauts, shout out to New York, you know what I mean? Um, shout out to everybody that's listening, tuning in, following, sharing. I truly appreciate it. Um, like I said, there's a different energy out here. Y'all should be tapping into it and getting to your creativeness and doing some dope shit because this is the season to do it. It's dope season. <laughs> so... Um, that's it, man. I am Slapface Galactus. Yo, the Cosmic Hippie Shine Moon. The Almighty Chansomus Prime. F and G transform and roll out. And we are the Fly Nerd Group tuning out. We are rolling out this motherfucker. I'm rolling up. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. I'll let y'all, man. Peace. All right, peace. Peace, peace. What you see is what you get. W F N T. Fly nerds. You see it the same. Yeah. You see black excellence and intelligence. We now combine. Fly nerds on the verge of connecting the minds. North, south, east, west over digital lines. Catalogs of the culture inside. Seen it with our own eyes. We done been through the trends and phases. The names and the legacy, the changing faces. We can't talk shop, only dealing the truth. You tuning in to the fly nerd group. So let the W-F-N-G F-N-G Fly Nerd Radio W-F-N-G Fly Nerd Radio